The story begins with a news channel broadcasting the news of some girl's abduction in the city. Even after four recent disappearances from the same area, the police and other government agencies have failed to find any clue. Due to this, several rumors have started circulating online about these disappearances, including some speculating that the perpetrator is doing it for organ trafficking. However, this wasn't the case, as no ransom was demanded. Also, if money were his concern, he would have targeted children who are comparatively easier to kidnap. Hence, no one knows the real reason behind these abductions. The TV is then turned off by a woman who is the private tutor of a young boy named Jin. She tells him that break time is over and they should resume work. Jin's dad, Dong Su, comes, taps Jin on his head, which stutters Jin. Dong Su instructs Jin to focus on his studies and informs his tutor that he is going on a business trip to the Philippines, so she must babysit Jin. He gives full authority to his son's teacher and then departs, leaving Jin alone with his teacher. The teacher seems interested in Jin's father, so she asks Jin about the worth of their house and his father's age. However, instead of answering her questions, Jin poses a counter question, asking the teacher about three different dates. The teacher is oblivious to the answer, so he says that these are the dates his father went on business trips. The teacher is still confused about his point and asks him to explain, but Jin ignores her request and seeks her permission to use the restroom. She tells him to return shortly as they have lots of unfinished work. Jin enters the washroom and grabs a big hammer hidden behind a painting. The hammer falls from his hands and makes a noise, so the teacher asks him about it. Jin handles the situation by saying that it's nothing. He then speaks to himself and says that all those dates he mentioned earlier, the days his father went on business trips, are the days someone went missing in their neighborhood. Jin then goes out and murders his teacher using the same hammer. Afterward, Jin returns the hammer to its original spot while wearing a mask. The next morning, Jin wakes up terrified and sweating from a recurring nightmare where someone pushes him from a tall building. He sighs in relief that it is just a dream and then leaves for school. On his way, he notices a pamphlet on a pole seeking a tutor in exchange for a handsome salary. Jin suddenly remembers the murder he committed yesterday of his teacher and angrily removes the pamphlet. Meanwhile, at a bus stop, a young man is angry at an old man who cut the line. Dongsu witnesses the scene as the young man starts fighting and abusing the old man. Dongsu tells him to behave as this is not the right way to treat elders. The young man yells at Dongsu to go away and mind his own business, but Dongsu doesn't listen and tries to stop him from hitting the old man. Consequently, Dongsu gets hit. As Jin reaches his school, he sees two girls discussing the recent abductions. One of them reveals that earlier, she, like many other students, received a text instructing all girls to walk in pairs even in daylight and take extra precautionary measures. Jin overhears this conversation and finds it interesting that no one sent him such a message. He soon concludes that he must not have gotten this message because of his antisocial personality. Suddenly, Jin sees his school's famous bully, Manny Kim, taking two girls in his arms. They both get scared by this sudden surprise, and he assures them that no one will kidnap them as they are not pretty. Manny's friend, Pan Han, agrees that all the kidnapped girls were pretty. He says that the kidnapper must have had fun with them before he kills them. A scared student, Bo, standing beside Pan, tells him that he needs to stop saying that because there was no news of rapes. Hearing this, Pan gets angry and kicks Bo in his stomach, saying that he knows nothing. Manny, Pan, and Bo pass by Jin while Jin stares at them. Pan orders Jin to stop staring at them, or else he will beat him up. Bo slaps Jin, calling him glass eye emo freak and instructing him to stop staring at them. Jin's left eye is substituted with a glass eye that he hides from all students with the help of bangs. Pan also makes fun of Jin's artificial glass eye, and the bullies leave. After the classes, Jin is seen sitting in an empty classroom and looking outside at other students playing football and enjoying. Then Jin leaves for home, and on his way he witnesses Manny and Pan bullying Bo as Bo has forgotten his wallet at home and Pan is out of cigarettes. Bo apologizes for forgetting his wallet and seeks permission to take his wallet from home, which Pan allows. Before Bo leaves, Pan again slaps him many times. Jin distantly watches the scene 
and surprisingly takes out Bo's wallet from his pocket with a smirk. Then he sees his dad with a small bandage on his face due to the punches he received for intervening in a fight earlier. Seeing his dad, Jin's smile disappears, although dong Su keeps smiling at his kid and leaves. Despite the fact that his father has provided his kid with all the luxuries and maintained an image of a very kind man in the city, Jin is disgusted by his dad. Jin introduces his school life, where Manny Kim is the strongest guy and the master of all bullies. His partner Pan Han is not his friend, but acts like a loyal wolf, always staying close to Manny. Bo is a pathetic coward who gets bullied and then takes out his anger on Jin, who is weaker than him. Suddenly, Bo shows up in front of Jin and accuses him of stealing his wallet. He suspects Jin to be the culprit because he's the only one staying behind in the classroom during gym class, and this way, it's very easy for him to steal anyone's belongings. Bo curses, abuses, and beats the hell out of Jin. However, Jin keeps saying that he didn't steal his wallet. Jin starts coughing as Bo kicks him in the chest and he tells Bo that it's dangerous for him. As Jin is about to faint, a girl arrives there and stops the fight, taking Jin to the hospital with the help of a teacher. Jin wakes up confused in the hospital, and the teacher tells Jin that one of his heart's artificial valves stopped working earlier and he almost died. However, a new transfer student, Kyun Yoon, saved Jin's life. Kyun enters the room with a bright smile on her face and introduces herself to Jin. Then... The teacher receives a phone call, and Kyun tells Jin that she didn't reveal to the teacher that Jin was getting beaten up by Bo. The teacher returns and informs Jin that his father is arriving soon, so until his father arrives, he will take care of Jin. Jin is shocked and worried about learning the news of his father's arrival at the hospital, and he immediately orders Kyun to leave the room. Kyun is confused, noticing a change in the expressions and tone of Jin, who was very calm earlier. Jin yells at Kyun and orders her to get out as she was the one who saved him earlier. Jin gets angrier and shouts at Kyun, who leaves the room, slamming the door. The teacher is also confused by his move and asks him the reason behind this. However, Jin requests his teacher to call his dad and stop him from entering the hospital. But unfortunately, Dong Su is already here as Jin sees him outside the window, helping an old lady carrying her stuff. Outside the hospital, as Dong Su helps the lady, her grandchild starts shouting at Dong Su as he anticipates danger due to the recent disappearances. Dong Su replies that he is just helping the lady, but the man doesn't listen to him and takes his grandma away. Jin is watching this scene from the window and remembers the scene where he killed his teacher and then gets angry with his dad. He thinks Dong Su has only maintained a fake image of being a good man, but in reality, he is a total hypocrite. Dong Su remembers his childhood as one day, his father was invited to his school as a special guest to deliver a lecture to the students on happiness. When Dong Su entered Jin's class, all students whispered about Dong Su being the CEO of a famous company and his son being his total opposite as he behaves abnormally. Jin is sad listening to the gossip. Dong Su introduces himself as Jin's father and starts presenting on happiness. He asks students to share their definitions of happiness with him and students give mixed responses. Someone calls making money happiness, and someone says happiness can be as trivial as going to a good university. In contrast, according to one student, happiness is merely a matter of a person becoming famous. Dong Su smiles at them and says that everything the students mentioned brings happiness, but happiness always comes at the cost of something. Students cannot comprehend what Dong Su is saying, so he clarifies to them, that earning money or fame will cost someone to lose something in his life. The world is fair where you earn something only when you lose something else. He adds that many forms of happiness can be earned without losing anything, and students are curious to know those forms. On the other hand, Jin is getting angrier and angrier at his dad. Dong Su tells students about kindness, love, and helping others as forms of happiness that can be earned for free. In the present day, Dong Su comes beside Jin's hospital bed and thanks Jin's teacher for saving his son's life. The teacher tells him that Jin's life was saved by their new transfer student who had just left the room. Dong Su then asks the teacher to leave as he might have other responsibilities to fulfill, and the teacher asks Dong Su to take care of Jin as he seemed disturbed a while ago. Dong Su smiles, responding affirmatively. And then the teacher leaves. Dong Su takes out a piece of paper from his pocket. 
which is the pamphlet Jin tore apart earlier. He then asks Jin the reason behind the pamphlet being torn apart, and Jin sweats as he can't tell his dad that he was the one who did it. Jin then remembers the murder he committed of his teacher when his dad left, saying that he was leaving for a business trip to the Philippines. It turns out that Dongsu never left for the Philippines and stayed right there. Jin, after murdering the teacher, dragged her to a secret room behind a cupboard where his dad was staying. The secret room had many weapons and medical tools. Surprisingly, Dongsu is the real culprit who makes Jin help him in killing people and then takes out their organs to sell. The pamphlet Dongsu is inquiring about is a way to invite girls to his apartment and continue his job of organ trafficking. Dongsu inquires if Jin tore the pamphlet apart while Jin gets lost in his thoughts. He relives his oldest memories, and the first memory he encountered was when he was a kid, and he woke up on a hospital bed. Jin doesn't remember anything before that. He recalls that he was wounded when he woke up from the hospital bed, and his left eye was replaced with a glass eye. Jin had difficulty breathing and moving around as his heart had been modified with artificial valves. Even his joints had metal pins and plates in them, making him a disabled child, and all this was because of his father who took many organs out of Jin's body. Jin then reveals that his dad always told him that his mother died when he was young, leaving Jin with only one blood relative in this world, his dad. He then remembers the first time he learned the truth about Dong Su. One day Jin found his father dragging a woman he murdered, and he was shocked to see his dad doing such an inhumane thing. Jin asked Dong Su why he was doing that, but his dad did not respond. However, Jin felt that if he didn't help his father, he would be severely punished by him and might even be killed. Soon, Jin became accustomed to this violence, which became the new normal for him. Jin felt humiliated since childhood for being considered a bastard and a useless brat. He gave up a long time ago so that he may not face humiliation or even the punishment of death from his dad. Now he follows Dongsu's every command. In the present, when Jin is repeatedly inquired about the pamphlet, he lies to his dad, saying that he didn't do it. Dong Su then asks Jin if he has selected their next target, and Jin answers by taking the name of his bully, Manny Kim. Unexpectedly, Dong Su slaps Jin with a smile and asks him to take any girl's name. Jin reluctantly replies that he can't think of any girl. Dong Su then tells Jin that he saw a very cute girl coming out of Jin's hospital room and she was wearing a uniform from his school. Jin is shocked and worried that his dad must be talking about Kyun Yun. He gets scared when he feels that his father's next target might be the new transfer student who saved his life. Dong Su then describes his short meeting with Kyun and tells him the girl looked like Jin's mother. Then he inquires Jin if she is the same transfer student who saved Jin's life today, but Jin gulps and replies in negative. Dong Su tells him he will take care of the matter and Jin can now leave for home. Before Dongsu leaves, he orders Jin to find that girl in his school, and for this, he explains her physical appearance. He tells Jin that the girl had long black hair, neat brown shoes, a bag with a patch of some sticker stuck to it, and her height was around 5.3 feet. Then Dongsu departs, saying, if Jin needs money, he can ask him. Jin regrets being an accomplice to his serial killer, Dad. Jin remembers in his childhood, his father used to take advantage of him, divert women's attention, and then kill them. One day, he was ordered by his dad to go cry to a woman sitting on a bench. Jin follows the plan which Dong Su tells him, and he cries to the woman telling her he has lost his dad. The woman was kind enough to help him find his father, so she fell prey to Dong Su and was killed by him. Later, when transporting her dead body in the car, they were stopped at the security check post. Dong Su requested the police officers to be quick with the investigation, pointing toward Jin, who had a fever. Police didn't investigate him and let him go as they couldn't suspect Dong Su as a murderer because of Jin sitting with him. As they left for home, Dong Su asked Jin to remove the hot pad from his shirt as it was no longer needed. At present, Jin goes to his home and browses the internet for some gym equipment, but he is reluctant to order them. Then he starts working out by doing push-ups on the floor and remembers the details Dong Su gave him to look for while finding the girl in his school. Jin is sure that Dong Su's next target is Kyun. He continues working out and finally stops after 20 push-ups. Jin sits on the floor, breathing heavily, 
and thinks the best thing about working out is that it leaves no trace mark. Suddenly, Jin hears the door's keypad being pressed, and his dad enters the room, making Jin gasp in fear. Dong Su expresses his displeasure to Jin for not greeting his dad, and then notices Jin breathing heavily. He asks if Jin is working out, and Jin is scared of him. So he, once again, lies confidently that he wasn't working out. Dong Su goes to the refrigerator and takes out a soda can while Jin asks him what is for dinner. Dong Su replies that tonight there will be a party at his uncle's house because his daughter, Mig Yong, has got a job. His dad instructs him to prepare as they will be leaving soon and not to make any mistakes in front of his uncle. The scene shifts to Jin's uncle's house where Dong Su and Jin's uncle have a small business talk and then the uncle asks Mig Yong to give Dong Su a refill. Mig Yong and Dong Su begin talking, and Dong Su compliments Mig Yong for always being a smart kid. He then congratulates her for getting the job in such a famous company, and Mig Yong thanks him. Suddenly, Dong Su shifts his attention to Jin and says that quite contrary to Mig Yong, who just got a job, his kid Jin hasn't got a studying bone in his body. Jin laughs hesitantly and asks Dong Su not to drink too much as it will be bad for his liver. Hearing this, Jin's uncle compliments him for growing mature and taking care of his dad. After some chit-chat, Jin's uncle suggests Jin and Dong Su have a father-son arm wrestle, and Jin has a bad feeling about this. He refuses, initially saying he has no energy, but Jin's uncle advises that young people like him should not refuse to show their strength. Jin's uncle says that no matter how much an old man works out, it doesn't help him, but a young man like Jin should be very strong at this age as the physical prime for guys starts in high school. Mig Yong clears all the stuff off the table, and Jin and Dong Su prepare for the wrestle. Jin is afraid of being put in a competition against his dad, who is already looking at him with intimidating eyes. Jin's uncle asks him not to go easy on Dong Su, just because he is his dad. The wrestling begins, and Jin struggles to defeat Dong Su as he wants to win for once and prove his strength. He wants to get stronger to deal with his evil dad, but Dong Su is very comfortable as his son is no match for him. Jin's uncle tries to motivate Jin, but his support is insufficient for Jin to defeat his father. Dong Su is calm as the difference in power is too much. He has a big smile on his face which makes Jin sweat and tremble. Suddenly Dong Su slams Jin's hand on the table, defeating him and shocking Jin's uncle, who expected Jin to be the winner. As he is young, and might be working out. Jin gets sad, thinking that his father has never thought of him as his son. Dong Su has always kept a close watch over Jin and prohibited him from working out. The moment he feels Jin has become a threat to him, he will kill him without even batting an eye. The next day at school, Jin is cleaning up the floor with a mop and hears some noise coming from outside. As he goes outside, he sees Manny and Pan with Bo, where Bo is getting beaten up by Pan. It is because Jin got admitted to the hospital yesterday after being severely beaten up by Bo, which could have caused the three of them to be in huge trouble. Pan gives Bo a final slap, telling him if he ever acts up alone, he is dead. Manny stops Pan and then asks Bo if he has understood the lesson, and Bo flinches seeing Manny talking to him. He then admits that he made a mistake and promises never to repeat it. Manny sees Jin watching the scene from a distance and he calls him to come here. When Jin arrives, Manny tells him they have taught Bo a great lesson for what happened yesterday, but Jin looks at him with questionable eyes, signaling that nothing happened to him. Manny is at first confused, but then he laughs, saying that's how it should go. Jin should pretend as if nothing happened, but still, he wants to end things fairly, and Bo will apologize to Jin. He orders Bo to kneel on his stomach and beg for forgiveness, but Bo is reluctant. Pan slams Bo's head on the ground, making him kneel, and then Bo starts seeking forgiveness for his wrong acts from yesterday. Manny doesn't think Bo's apology seems real, so he orders him to keep begging. However, suddenly he notices an evil grin on Jin's face. Manny is shocked to feel that Jin is not scared of them, and then Jin departs. Pan orders Bo to get up and bring them some bread and milk, and Bo runs away, following the order quickly. Pan asks Manny if there is anything wrong as he seems skeptical of something, to which Manny replies that Glass-Eye, emo freak, doesn't seem to be scared of them anymore. Pan asks what he did to make Manny feel that way because there is not even a single boy at school who is not afraid of Manny and Pan. Manny then asks him to forget it, shrugging off his thoughts. 
Jin leaves for his home, thinking about the bullies group as they are stronger than him and can put him in great danger. However, they have always been unable to scare him as he resides with the devil, his father. Suddenly, Jin is shocked to see Kyun in front of his eyes, and coincidentally, Kyun also notices Jin. Jin acts hesitantly, remembering the time he yelled at Kyun in the hospital, and Kyun gives him a disgusting look. Eventually, Jin and Kyun sit together and begin talking, where Kyun tells her story from yesterday. She tells Jin that she is a transfer student in his school and that yesterday was her first day. She has a grandpa who calls her mom because the older he gets, the more childish he behaves. In the morning, she prepared porridge for her grandpa, which he never likes, but because he has no teeth, he has to eat porridge anyways. After giving porridge to her grandpa, she left for school immediately, as she was late. On her way, she thought it was not good for her to be late on the first day of school. She was afraid of going to a new school, but then she saw a beautiful sky, which made her happy. She wasn't afraid anymore. However, when she reached the school, she saw Bo beating Jin badly. Kyun tells Jin that she intervened in the fight, yelling at Bo, who fell back on the ground in fear. Then she told Bo that because he had beaten up Jin, he had gone unconscious. Bo couldn't believe that Jin was that weak, and when Kyun put her ear on Jin's chest, she heard some weird sound coming from his heart. Kyun asks Jin about the sound, and Jin replies that it is the sound of an artificial valve in his heart. Kyun makes a follow-up question about the name Glass Eye Bo had given to Jin. Jin seems reluctant to answer that question, and Kyun says that it's okay if Jin doesn't want to answer all her questions. Kyun continues to devour the ice cream Jin bought for her as a gift to make amends, and then she asks Jin about everything that happened in the hospital. Jin explains that Bo thought he had stolen his wallet, so he was beaten up. Kyun clarifies that she wants to know why Jin yelled at her to leave, as she couldn't think of any wrong she might have committed to Jin. He doesn't reply, and wishes she would focus on eating. But Kyun continues to speak while eating, and says that he must have a strong hatred towards his dad. Jin's dreadful expression confirms her speculation. She then tells Jin that his dad must have been worried for him, and that's why he wanted to come to the hospital, so he shouldn't be behaving so heartlessly toward his dad. Kyun suddenly encounters a flashback to when she was a child, and how her dad died as he got too sick. She considers having a father in one's life a blessing, and Jin should be thankful for it. Jin tells her that he is embarrassed to show his dad to anyone. He comments that she is lucky that she lives with her grandpa only. This angers Kyun, and she instructs Jin to be nice to his dad, calling him a dummy. Then Jin leaves for his home on a bus, and remembers Kyun instructing him to care for his dad. However, he thinks Kyun is just being nosy, as she knows nothing about his dad. Jin believes that sometimes there are useless, outright harmful parents in the world, like Dongsu. Jin considers Kyun a nice girl who grew up in a normal family, which justifies her views. Suddenly, an old man appears before Jin and mocks him for being impolite as he keeps sitting while the old man stands. Jin replies that his youth doesn't make him healthy, but the old man blames the education system for making children ill-mannered. He says kids nowadays don't know how to behave with their elders. Unexpectedly, Manny appears on the scene and puts his arm on the old man's shoulder with a smirk. He gives an intimidating look to the old man, saying that he should care about his manners before he starts flapping his mouth in a public place. The old man leaves, and then Manny stands before Jin, staring at him. Jin thinks he needs his seat, but Manny tells him that he always stands, so he doesn't need to worry about him. Manny begins talking to Jin, asking him about his dad's business as the CEO of G Corporation, and then tells him that his father's business is Dongsu's competitor. Jin acts shocked, as he has no idea about this, and Manny asks him if his dad is so rich, then why he is so weak himself. Jin replies that it has nothing to do with Manny, but Manny says that both of them belong to the same class. And if Jin acts weak, walking around all droopy, it affects the way Manny looks too. Manny tells Jin that he doesn't seem scared of him, and has the audacity to talk back to the strongest bully at his school. Jin becomes nervous, saying that he didn't mean to offend him, but Manny calms him down. 
To Jin's surprise, Manny invites him to the gym to help him work out, and Jin accompanies him. Later, after some workout in the gym, Manny sits for some rest, and they both have a small talk. Jin finds Manny to be the typical elite type, but the only downside is that he is also a bully. Manny then leaves, saying that he should get a drink now. He asks Jin if he wants to join him as he will get together with some girls and have fun, but Jin reluctantly denies it. Manny departs, instructing Jin to act like he doesn't know him at school. If he behaves otherwise, Manny will kill him. Jin gulps before calling Manny back, and Manny stops. To his surprise, Jin earnestly requests Manny to teach him to work out as he wants to get stronger too. Hearing this, Manny bursts into laughter, and then his expressions suddenly change, making him look extra scary. He comes back with long, decisive, and intimidating steps grabbing Jin by his collar for daring to make such a request. Manny tells Jin that just because he hung out with Jin for a few hours, he shouldn't think that they are friends. Manny tells him that he would have already killed him if he weren't the son of his dad's competitor. Jin clarifies that this is not what he meant, but Manny orders him to kneel in the position of a dog. Jin doesn't comply and keeps standing like a statue despite repetitive orders from Manny. This makes Manny believe that Jin has got the guts to stand up for himself. However, he can't protect himself because he is physically weak. Manny then agrees to help him work out in the gym. On the other hand, Dong Su is being interviewed by a female article writer for the regular charity he makes out of his profit from his business. The interviewer compliments Dong Su that finding rich and kind CEOs like him is hard. Then she asks him for what purpose he will make charity this time. Dong Su acts innocently, saying that there is no future for a country whose youth is sleeping. Then he informs the interviewer that he plans to fund the education and transport of many unfortunate young students who have dreams but can't pursue them. The interviewer is impressed, and then she wraps up the interview. The lady seeks Dong Su's permission to mention his elegant style in the article when she introduces him. She says he is a handsome, tall man, and it would be a shame not to mention Dong Su's physical appearance in the article, to which Dong Su agrees. The interviewer and Dong Su have a chit-chat for some time, and they end up going to Dong Su's home, where they have plans to spend the night together. The lady enters the washroom to take a shower, and Dong Su watches her from the glass window while smoking. He takes out her identity card, from which he comes to know her name, Hyung Young Yun, who is 24 years old. He realizes that Hyung Young must be attracted to old men like him. Hyung Young comes out of the washroom with a towel covering her body, and she apologizes to Dong Su for making him wait so long, but Dong Su tells her it's no big deal. The strange part is the lady reminds Dong Su of Kyun's face. The next morning, Dong Su gets up from bed while Miss Yoon is still asleep. He gets ready for his work, and then he receives a call, so he leaves. On the other hand, Kyun is scared to see a note stuck outside her home from the loan office. She hasn't paid back the loan, so the creditors threaten her not to run from them as they will find her soon. Kyun then remembers the last time she went to a prostitute ring where she was reluctant to provide her services after talking to the boss. The boss was a lady who told Kyun that she had already been there three times and that if she wanted to work, she needed to take it seriously. She said there are plenty of other girls ready for the job so she can leave and do any other part-time job. Kyun told her that she would inform her of the final decision in a week. After seeing the note, she finally decides to join that prostitute ring thinking every job is equal. In the gym, Manny is helping Jin to work out, and during the workout, Jin starts breathing heavily. He didn't do any hard exercise except hitting the boxing bag. However, he still breathes like he has run a marathon. Manny is surprised to see this, as Jin doesn't even smoke. Manny then proceeds to teach Jin how to hit the punching bag. He teaches him that he needs to move his whole body, utilizing all its energy, while hitting the bag, and then asks him to give it a try again. Jin thinks that although Manny is a bad guy, he is very strong. Jin proceeds on the second try, and still, he is not able to do the job in the right way. After some time, they both sit as they are tired, and Manny's phone rings. It's a girl who is calling Manny, and Manny has saved her contact with the name Old Bitch. Manny is irritated to receive this call, and he tells Jin that although this girl has a masculine appearance, she pays him money often. 
Jin asks if it is some sort of a part-time job, and Manny asks him to join him at the place he goes to find the answer. At night, Dong Su, who has covered his face with a mask, arrives at a remote place to collect money from two men whom he sells human organs to. However, the two men aren't ready to give Dong Su a single penny, which makes Dong Su ask them the reason behind it. Suddenly, the other man throws Dong Su's photo in front of him, revealing that now they know his face and can reveal his identity in the city. His image of being a kind man will be ruined. If Dong Su doesn't want this to happen, he must provide them with organs free of cost. Dong Su then removes his disguise and answers with a smirk that he'll agree to their conditions. Suddenly, Dong Su stabs both of them, and one of them instantly dies, while the other is on the verge of dying before Dong Su comes to him and starts talking. He tells the dying man that he usually doesn't kill men, but he had to do it today as they both crossed their limits. Dong Su says that organ trafficking is not his hobby, but it is his way of showing love and giving farewell to the girls who give him pleasure. The second man also dies. Later, Kyun reaches the prostitution ring, which looks like a karaoke club from the outside. Her boss, Miss Lim, gives her some revealing clothes to change into, and before she leaves, Miss Lim instructs her to hide her real age as she is a minor, and Kyun agrees. As Kyun returns, she's presented with other girls to some customers for the selection. The customers find Kyun cute and awkward at the same time as she is new. They think that she is a minor, but then they ignore this as she has a beautiful face. A customer finally selects Kyun, and then Kyun's boss asks her to go with the guy and take good care of him. The guy takes Kyun in his arms to a sofa in the music room while Kyun is being nervous. He compliments her that she is the prettiest girl he has ever seen after so many visits to this club. Then he puts one hand on Kyun's thigh, and Kyun starts feeling uncomfortable. She is confused and scared at the same time as she thinks if she should stop the guy or let him do what he wants, as she is the one who has agreed to this work. In the meantime, the manager talks to Miss Lim that it was not a good move to send a new girl with a bunch of losers directly, as she must be nervous. Miss Lim tells him that Kyun needs a push from behind to get started, since she was indecisive earlier. Surprisingly, Manny arrives with Jin, and Miss Lim asks him the reason behind his early arrival today, to which Manny replies that he was missing her. Miss Lim then inquires about the name of the other guy who has come with Manny. Manny tells Miss Lim that the guy she's asking about is his friend, but he is too innocent and naive, so he has brought him here to make a man out of him. Jin wore a suit upon Manny's orders, but was unaware of the reason behind it. Miss Lim tells Manny that Jin looks too young and minors are not allowed, but Manny takes her in his arms and leaves, telling Jin to stay right there. A girl will soon arrive looking for him, and when she comes, Jin should join her wherever she goes. So Jin sits on a bench and starts waiting for Manny's return. Innocent Jin is unaware that the place he misunderstands as a karaoke club is actually a prostitution ring. Jin glances at the room from where he can hear the loud music coming out, and goes to see what's happening. Inside the room was Kyun, sitting with her customer, and the other customers were also there with their selected girls. As they talk, the guy puts his hand on Kyun's shoulder, and she gets nervous and scared. Eventually, the guy's hand moves towards her breast, and she tries to move away, but he grabs her, not letting go of her. Consequently, in a state of anger, Kyun slaps his face hard. The other people are surprised to see this, and the guy first gets confused and then becomes angry at Kyun, so he gives her a harsh slap in return, and Kyun falls to the ground. She starts apologizing, saying that it's her first time, but the man is not interested in her emotional story. He begins beating Kyun badly, grabbing her by the hair, and drags her out of the room, calling the manager. The customer yells loudly that he has been visiting many clubs for the past 20 years, and this is the first time he got slapped by a girl he paid for. Kyun cries silently, and then she raises her eyes to look up in shock as someone calls her. Kyun sees Jin standing in front of her, which makes her even more embarrassed. She struggles to get out of the man's grip, but he starts beating her up badly, which angers Jin. He decides to fight with the man and remembers the technique Manny told him to hit the next person using his entire body's energy. 
The manager, Miss Lim, and Manny also arrive, while Jin moves forward using his whole body's energy to hit the man. He delivers him a punch, but unfortunately Jin is so weak that he ends up getting beaten up severely. After the fight, Jin and Kyun sit together, and Kyun asks him why he fought for her when he is so weak. Jin doesn't answer, and instead asks Kyun why she was at the club, to which Kyun angrily replies that her parents left her with a ton of debt, and now she is being chased by debt collectors. She needs to make easy money to return the loan. Jin gets worried about her, and asks her how much debt she needs to pay, and Kyun looks at him with questionable eyes. Later, Manny is seen on his way out of the club, and he is thinking about the courageous move of Jin when he punched a customer's face. He considers it almost unbelievable for a weak person like Jin. The next day in school, Jin, alone in the class, thinks about the last night when he asked Kyun about the total amount of her debt, and she told him that it was 130 million won, around 100,000 USD. He thinks that this amount is nothing for his dad due to his successful business. But then, he remembers the moment he promised Kyun to pay her loan, and she didn't take him seriously. The next day at school, Jin receives a text from Dong Su that he has deposited 1,500,000 won into his account, and then he inquires if Jin has found the girl. Jin glances at Kyun from the window when Manny suddenly enters the room and informs Jin that last night he took care of everything afterward and had the girl fired. Further, he tells Jin that working at a club doesn't make someone a piece of trash, given the conditions of his or her life. Hearing Manny say all these things melts Jin's heart, and he comments that he misjudged Manny's good character. Manny also pretends he has forgotten everything that happened yesterday, as it will be bad for Kayun's reputation if anyone finds out about the incident. Then, Manny is called by someone, and he leaves the room. Jin still has to reply to his dad if he has found the girl or not. He looks outside the window and finds Kyun happily talking to a guy and laughing her heart out. Two guys then enter the classroom and they discuss Kyun as the new transfer student who is cute like some TV star. Out of jealousy, Jin almost sends a message saying that he found her, but then his attention is caught by Kyun, who waves at him with a bright smile. Jin has a change of heart and he gives up his decision to tell his dad the truth. Instead, he sends a message that he couldn't find her. The scene transitions to the time when the class begins, and the teacher lectures students about sex education. He begins the lecture by introducing the word porn, and says that students must have already learned about this in junior high. He then explains the procedure when a sperm reaches an egg and fertilizes it, uh, but the boys don't take it seriously and make fun of it. They whisper laughingly, which grabs the teacher's attention, and he gets angry. The teacher points toward a student and asks him to stand up. He obliges, and then the teacher asks him whether he has a girlfriend and if they have had sex. The student reluctantly tells the teacher that they did it, but without protection, which angers the teacher so he delivers a slap to his face. He then instructs all students to spend their time studying as it is not the age they should be involved in these sexual activities. They are not mature enough to carry the responsibility afterward, which will ruin a girl's life. Once they grow up and have the capability to be responsible, then no one cares if they do it or not. All these things are not making any sense to Jin, and his mind is in a state of confusion as to what sperm and eggs are. How does sperm come out, and in what way is this going to ruin a girl's life? After the class, when Kyun and Jin sit together, he asks Kyun about porn and many other things they were taught today in class. Kyun can't believe what Jin just asked, making her think that Jin is out of his mind for asking something like this from a girl. She tells Jin that asking sexual questions fall under the category of verbal harassment, but Jin clarifies that this is not what he meant. He just wanted to clear his confusion regarding the topic and there was no one else in his life to whom he could talk to. Kyun is stunned in disbelief with Jin's innocence and timidly explains to him that porn means a movie that is recorded when a man and a woman do that thing. Jin doesn't understand what she is talking about and why his teacher would discuss movies during a sex education class. Kyun slaps Jin as she thinks Jin is doing it on purpose, and Jin is confused. She asks him 
what he was doing during his sex education classes in junior high school, to which Jin tells her that he only attended one class in which everything was theoretical. He couldn't understand what the teacher was talking about. Further, he had no friends who could tell him about anything. Jin doesn't even know that he can watch porn on the internet. The conversation makes Kyun ask Jin if he was educated by his parents about it or not. Hearing this, Jin gets a flashback where Dong Su was dragging a woman into the secret room, followed up by some painful moans Jin overheard from outside the door. Jin suddenly starts coughing and falls to the ground remembering that incident that shocks Kyun. Jin leaves for his home, and later, when he uses the computer, he searches for porn on the internet. The results get filtered out by the internet, and it is written that the user can see the results after verifying his age. Jin is clueless as to what should be done now. In the next scene, Jin meets Manny, who comes with Pan and Bo. Manny asks Pan about the most important thing in a fight, and Pan delivers this question to Bo for the answer. Bo answers that it can be one's physical strength and muscle power. For this, Bo gets a kick in his ass from Pan upon Manny's order. Then, Manny proceeds to ask the same question from Jin, and Jin tells him that the most important thing in a fight is brutality. Manny somewhat agrees with his answer, but clarifies that it takes guts to start a fight and scare the next person, so guts are the most important thing, even if the person is not a professional fighter. He illustrates what he just said by making Pan and Jin stand in front of each other. He tells Jin that it's obvious Pan is way stronger than Jin physically, but if he has no guts, he will be defeated easily. A person who has guts can stab the next person's eyes, kick him in the balls, bite him, or even throw sand in his eyes. He will do whatever it takes to win. Having no compassion for the opponent or the fear of what will happen after the fight makes a person strong. While Manny says all these things, Jin imagines himself killing Dong Su. Manny then asks if Jin understood what he said, and Jin confidently replies affirmatively. Manny smirks and tells Jin that he can go now, as that was it for today's lesson. He tells Jin that he will see him at the gym later, and Jin departs. Pan is confused, and he asks Manny why he's helping Jin. Manny tells him that there is no particular reason behind it, as he is just doing it for fun. Later, when Kyun is going to her home, she recalls her recent interaction with Jin when he was suddenly gagging. As he got up from the ground, Kyun asked her what he thought Kyun was doing at the karaoke club. Jin innocently replied that he thought all Kyun had to do was pour drinks for the customers and laugh at their jokes because that was what he saw on TV. Kyun bursts into laughter as she thinks Jin is an idiot, but then her expression changes when she realizes that he might be dealing with some kind of trauma. She shrugs off her thoughts and sees the nice weather around, making her crave ice cream. She sees a convenience store right in front of her and reads the pamphlet stuck outside. The pamphlet asks for the services of a person above 20 for a part-time job on the night shift. After reading this, Kyun enters the store to buy the ice cream and see if she is eligible to apply for the job. Coincidentally, Dong Su also arrives there and goes into the store. Both Dong Su and Kyun roam around the store, but Dong Su doesn't know that his target is right there. Kyun finally finds the ice cream she was craving and then goes to the owner of the shop, who stands at the counter machine. She asks him if it's necessary to be above 20 to apply for the job. The owner replies that it is necessary but Kyun requests him to hire her for the job. The owner tells her that it will be difficult for a student to pursue this night shift job, but Kyun confidently tells him that she has got a lot of experience in this field. She promises him that he will be leaving the store in good hands, and then the owner agrees to hire her. She exclaims in happiness and thanks him, but suddenly, Manny enters the same store, shocking Kyun. Manny, after seeing Kyun, calls her by the name of a transfer student and hearing this, Dong Su turns around in surprise. Dong Su remembers that the student who saved Jin's life was a transfer student, and he suspects the girl to be his target. Manny and Kyun have a small talk, in which Kyun tells him that it was unexpected of a bully to hide her secret of being in a prostitution club. Manny tells her that it wasn't easy for him to clean up the mess after he pulverized that customer, to which Kyun claims that if Manny could have helped her earlier, there wouldn't have been any mess created and also, Jin would have been safe. After some time, Kun departs to eat her ice cream, but unfortunately she forgets her phone in the store and Dong Su grabs it. Dong Su still has to confirm whether the girl in the store is his target or not. 
so stealing the girl's phone can be a way to find the answer. He turns the phone on and sees the lock screen wallpaper of her grandpa, but he doesn't recognize who he is. Manny then asks the shopkeeper for a pack of cigarettes, and the shopkeeper is reluctant to give him the cigarettes as he is in his school uniform. Dong Su takes the opportunity to deliver his lecture on so-called manners to Manny, telling him that smoking is not good at this age, as this will make him addicted, and he will end up damaging his lungs. He continues his lecture by adding that the shopkeeper could have gotten into big trouble because of Manny. This angers Manny, and he, he, he scolds Dong Su for poking his nose into the matter of his personal choices. Manny gets closer to Dong Su, who acts scared, and then grabs him by his tie. He pulls Dong Su, but then he taps on his shoulder, cleaning off the dust, and smirks. After that, he leaves the store and finds Dong Su's face a bit familiar. Back in the store, the owner comments that kids these days lack basic manners, but Dong Su tells him that he hopes the boy will soon get out of this attitude. Then Dong Su buys a soda can and leaves the store in his car. The moment Dong Su leaves, Kyun rushes back to the store in search of her phone, and she asks the owner about it. However, he has no idea where her phone could be. Dong Su is now in his office checking Kyun's phone, and he opens her messages. He opens a chat with her friend and reads the messages where Kyun is talking about how she saved Jin's life, and then tells her friend that Jin is a jerk who behaves like an outsider in his school. Her friend advises her to stay away from him as being with him might make her feel like an outsider too. Her friend then asks where she's residing, but she doesn't reveal it. Dong Su learns about Kyun's financial conditions when he opens a chat where a person is abusing and threatening her to pay the loan, but Kyun hasn't replied to him even once. Further, Dong Su checks her gallery and finds some random photos. Finally, he finds a photo with Kyun in it, which makes him happy that it is his target's phone. Dong Su bursts into a peal of evil loud laughter, and every employee in the office is confused to hear this. He then comes out of his office and grants everyone a short leave with a smile. Then he goes back to his cabin and opens the chat of Kyun's creditor. He replies to him by initially cursing, which confuses the creditor, but then Dong Su tells the creditor on behalf of Kyun that she is ready to pay the loan today. At night, Manny and Jin are on their way home after the gym, when Manny tells him that he sees a little improvement in Jin's fighting skills. Jin thanks him, saying he is surprised to learn that Manny is a lot nicer than he thought. Suddenly, Manny sees Kyun standing alone, and he tells Jin, who is confused as to what she must be doing alone outside at night. As they both get closer to her, and Manny waves at her, they discover that poor Kyun is crying. Upon asking, Kyun tells them that she lost her phone, and it had all her pictures, contacts, and everything else. Hearing this, Jin suggests she give her number to him, and he'll make a call and see if someone picks up. Kyun agrees with Jin's idea, so she gives her number to Jin, who makes a call. To Jin's surprise, he hears his dad's voice on the other side, who asks him if it's the phone's owner who called him. Jin immediately hangs up the call and lies to Manny and Kyun that the phone is turned off. On the other hand, Dong Su asks the creditor through Kyun's phone to come to a specific station and receive the payment. The creditor is confused as to how Kyun can pay him such a large amount all of a sudden. His other colleagues ask him if he's going somewhere, to which he tells them that Kyun has finally decided to pay the loan, and all of them wonder if she might have won the lottery. One of them suggests to the boss that he should accompany them, and then go to receive the payment as the girl might bring some other men with her. The boss gets angry at him for considering him a coward who is afraid of some high school kids. The boss then calls one of his colleagues, Manduk, to go with him. As the creditor, along with his colleague, reaches the station, he sees two homeless men sleeping on the floor despite the cold weather. Then he orders Manduk to bring him some coffee, but suddenly he receives a text from Kyun's number that her grandpa is sick, so she can't leave now. The text requests the creditor to meet Kyun at her house and receive the payment. This is Dong Su's plan to get to know Kyun's address, and he succeeds when the creditor agrees to meet Kyun at her place. However, he tells her that if he doesn't receive payment this time, he will take his revenge. He calls back Manduk and leaves for Kyun's home. 
turns out that one of the sleeping persons is Dong Su, and the other one is a beggar. He had hidden his face with the help of a cap that the beggar gave him. Dong Su pays him some money to rest in a motel while he follows the creditor's car. The creditor reaches Kyun's home and starts banging on the door, but they think Kyun is not at home, as no one is opening the door. Unfortunately, Dong Su has arrived, who is hiding somewhere with an evil smirk on his face as he has finally found out Kyun's address. It cuts back to the scene where Jin is with Manny and Kyun, and he is still shaken up after the call. He calms himself down and thinks to himself that it can't be his dad and might be someone else who has a similar voice. He assures Kyun that he will find her phone, and when she asks how, Jin suggests that the last place Kyun visited was the convenience store, so they should check the security camera footage of that store. The trio then reaches the store and checks the footage in which Dong Su steals Kyun's phone, making Jin gulp in fear. Manny is angry at Dong Su as he was the one who delivered him a lecture not to smoke, and he himself is a thief. Kyun is happy to know that all they have to do to get her phone back is to find this man. She thanks Jin for the nice suggestion, but Jin is lost in his thoughts. He asks if Kyun's phone has a password, to which he replies negatively. Upon asking, Kyun tells Jin that it had a photo of her in it too. This makes Jin lose his temper, so he grabs Kyun by her collar and shouts at her for making such a foolish mistake. Manny, Kyun, and the shop owner are scared to see this side of Jin. Jin comes back to his senses and leaves Kyun, giving her some money. He strictly instructs her not to go home tonight and find somewhere else to sleep with the money. He tells her that he will find her phone and prohibits her from calling that number ever again before he departs. Kyun is worried as she has to leave for home because she has to take care of her grandpa. Manny suddenly recognizes the thief from the footage and tells Kyun that he saw this man in an article on the internet. He is the CEO of the G Corporation and his dad's competitor. Further, Manny tells her that he is Jin's dad. Jin, who rushes out of the store, doesn't know what to do, and he is worried that his dad has memorized his number. If it is the case, then the moment he called on Kyun's phone, Dong Su would have known that it was Jin who lied to him, that he couldn't find the girl. Meanwhile, creditors who kept knocking at Kyun's door couldn't find anyone there, so they left. Kyun's grandpa comes out and says he is hungry, but can't find Kyun. Suddenly, grandpa sees a tall man standing behind him, smiling at him, and he asks for food from him. Dong Su tries to scare the grandpa by telling him that he is going to eat his granddaughter while the old man has no clue what he is talking about. Jin stops and thinks of a plan to save Kyun from his dad, but unfortunately he receives a text from Dong Su that he has found Kyun's home, making Jin panic in his anxiety. Scared, Jin now thinks of a plan that will make Dong Su leave Kyun's home himself. Thank you for sticking to the end, and if you enjoyed part one of Bastard, please like Subscribe and leave a comment to see part two. See you in the next video.